everybody. Uh, welcome to Inside the CISO's office. I'm Justin. I'm here with uh, my buddies Ryan and John. And John, what are we doing today? We are going to play a game called Backdoors and Breaches, which is a great way to do a lightweight tabletop exercise with your team. Yeah. So it, it takes all of the questions uh, out of your hands in a sense. You don't have to worry about what you're going to What's your, what's your initial compromise going to be? What's your pivot? What, how might they escalate? What's the C2? They've got it all built for you. Yeah. You can tell us who built it. because it... Yeah. Um, yeah, so Backdoors and Breaches was made by uh, Black Hills Information Security. They are a, uh, an information security services group out of uh, Black Hills, South Dakota. Um, full of talent, including um, you know, incredible artists and writers that built this game. And so we're going to play today. And we we're doing this, um, one, because... We think tabletop exercises are a great idea. We think that um, as a practice for your organization to be able to, um, you know, walk through periodically, how would we handle a certain incident? Um, you know, that's a valuable practice. The problem is they're hard to do, um, to come up with the scenario, to write down all the different things that could happen in that scenario, to get all the people in the room, and uh, worst of all, to make them slog through a three-hour exercise that they don't want to do. They would rather be anywhere but in that room exposing their deficiencies and lack of practices, right? Right. I mean, it's why do football teams, basketball teams practice for as long as they do? Because they want to get better. And you're not going to get better at a response, an incident response, without going through uh, a sample backdoor or breach that you have. And since it's Cybersecurity Awareness Month, this is the appropriate time to do that. That's right. So um, these guys built this game really as a way to make it more fun. And honestly, we played a couple games of this and it's pretty great. So we wanted to show it off today. Um, and, uh, you know, again, it was built by uh, Black Hills Information Security. They give this game away for free. Um, if you find them at a security conference, um, they'll probably be handing out uh, these decks. Um, and if, uh, if you aren't gonna go to a security conference, you can buy a deck from them. Um, we'll put the website up uh, as a link so that you can go check out their store and pick up a um, a deck, they're pretty cheap, and honestly, they all the profits that they make from these decks, uh, from selling them, they will use to, uh, you know, give away more of these decks to educators um, so that they can teach folks how to do uh, incident response and uh, tabletop exercises. So, with that said, um, we're going to dive into the game. And so, uh, I'm going to be the incident master, um, which is sort of the analog to a dungeon master. And uh, these two are going to, uh, you know, act as the CISO and the technical security lead. And so they are gonna be uh, the ones participating in the exercise. Um, when you actually do this game in real life uh, with your organization, uh, you're gonna gather your team around uh, and uh, your folks are gonna talk through the scenarios that are presented to you and talk through the procedures and the ways that you might respond to the scenarios that are presented to you. Um, and then consider how would we do this in real life? If this were a real life incident, what would we do? How would we sit down in front of our machines and, and take investigative actions? Uh, how would we go and query machines in our environment? Um, how would we go talk to folks in the environment and get answers? So we're gonna do all of that today um, with a fake company. Have you guys thought of a fake company you'd like to pretend you're a part of? I think Ryan's got yeah. something there. I'm the CISO of Hamrick Real Estate, of course, because it's about me. Mm -hmm. So let's, uh... <laughs> as always. Yeah. Uh, and, and this would be great, like Justin said and John has said, this would be a great way for us to test our incident response capabilities. And our plans, ways. assuming we've documented that. <laughs> well, following our previously documented plan, because yeah. we're, we're a good company. <laughs> yeah, so what we'll do is uh, we'll start by um, selecting a scenario. And uh, that actually <laughs> comes in the form of these four different cards. These four cards are uh, are you know kind of small stacks of... Um, different facets of a breach, right? One of them describes an initial compromise. One of them describes, uh, so that's basically how an attacker gets into the environment for the first time. Um, the next one describes um, pivoting and escalation. So how do they get from the machine that they've got a foothold on to other machines in the environment? How do they get better privileges, um, higher privileges, so that they can take uh, more you know, uh, administrative actions on the machines that they're trying to attack? Um, C2, command and control, and exfiltration, those cards describe how the attacker um, communicates with the compromised machine remotely and how they get data that they've stolen out of the environment. And then the persistence cards describe how the attacker 
uh, can stay in the environment long term? How do they get uh, a presence that uh, you know survives even after, say, their compromised machine gets rebooted? Um, so each of these cards is going to describe one of those facets of the intrusion. So what we're going to do is draw uh, a random card from each of this, uh, these four stacks. And these two, the players, are not going to see those cards. Only I will see them. Uh, and so their goal is to figure out uh, how the attacker did what they did. They want to detect each of these four items, each of these four facets of the investigation, using their security procedures, which are documented on the blue cards. And their goal is to, you know, in, in 10 turns or less, figure out each of these four cards. If they can't do that, they lose. If they do uh, detect all four of them, they win. And that's the goal of the game. So uh, I'm going to start selecting random cards. And uh, I'll show you some procedure cards as well. Actually, you know what I'll do first is let's take a look at one of these cards. So this is a Backdoors and Breaches card. Um, the, the four incident cards, uh, types of incident cards, will show <laughs> what uh, uh, you know, the attacker does. In this case, the attacker uses a malicious email. And so it, just, it names it, it describes what that looks like. And they're funny, these guys are good writers. And so you're gonna chuckle as you go through these cards. Uh, the, uh, the, the card also shows some detection mechanisms. These are key because the procedure cards here match up to these detection mechanisms. So how would an organization detect a phishing email or a successful fish in an organization? Uh, John, as a technical security guy, what would you say to that? How would somebody detect a phishing email? Uh, well, hopefully you've got your phishing uh, notification button turned on in your email client, so that way if a, your end user thinks that something could be phishing, they can just click the little button that says, notify security, I think this is a phishing email. That would be kind of the best case scenario. Um, it's not as widely deployed as I would like to see, sure. um, but that's one of, one of the sort of ways of group uh, or crowdsourcing <laughs> your incident detection mm -hmm. is putting that phishing link indicator on there. Another way is hopefully they have some kind of anti-spam, anti-phishing tool in front of uh, their email gateway so that it can filter out mm -hmm. the millions of uh, phishing emails that Certainly. are sent on a regular basis yeah. um, and minimize the attack surface. So what do you, let's say the user, the phishing email gets past all of that nonsense and gets into which, the user's inbox. Right, which does happen. Yeah. Right. Brian, what do you, what do you think uh, as, a, as a former investigator and analyst, you know, how would you go and find a, uh, you know, whether or not a user clicked on a fish and an, an attacker got in the environment as a result. What are some of the tools that you might go use for that? Well, I'm gonna to go to logs. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna look at DNS logs to look for known bad DNS or weird DNS anomalous mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna also look at uh, URL logs. Mm -hmm. uh, did they go to get all the way through to a URL that's like a weird URL string? Something or unusual or something suspicious. Something misspelled a little bit. Mm -hmm. Or a recently registered domain name, like sure. less than 24 hours old. Mm -hmm. Right, which theoretically, you know, if we have URL filtering, that should already be blocked. But uh, if it's not, that's where we would find that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I would look at all that stuff in our sim. If, so yeah. we have a sim. Yeah. Uh, the, the log analysis. And hey, look at that. You actually named the first type of detection that's on this card, which is sim log analysis. So, um, well, as the CISO, we paid a lot for the sim, so we really need to use the tool. I'm sure you paid yeah. a lot yes. for the sim. <laughs> it was worth the every penny. Don't come worth cheap. every penny. <laughs> so with these cards, uh, they'll list detection on them, and those, again, tied to the procedures. And so we'll flip these over in a bit, and we'll see which procedures uh, you know, are the company's actually very good at and which ones they might not be so good at. Um, but uh, the, the players will choose which of these uh, procedures they're going to execute to try to detect what happened here. And that's the play of the game. Um, it's how they use these procedures to figure out one of these things that's happened. Now, in real life, if you're playing this with your organization, that's the opportunity to talk through Hey, how are we doing with our SIM? Is our SIM configured how it should be? Do we have all the logs that we need going into it? Is there too much data in it? Is it so much data, as John calls it, the fog of more? Is it useless? Is it hard to use? Is it hard to search through to find, you know, the proverbial needle, right? Um, and then also on these cards, it'll list real life tools that an attacker could use to perform this work. Um, so those are helpful if you don't know what 
this attack type is. So, all right. Because these this game is good for uh, an advanced team. It's good for a introductory team. Mm -hmm. It's good for a, a company that doesn't even have uh, a security, you know, team per se. But they have IT folks who are doing all the the jobs, and they need to be able to run through a scenario because it's mm -hmm. hard unless you've gone through a couple of incidents and. Certainly, I've been through a few incidents. Uh, thankfully, not ransomware. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, you got to be—you've got to have some experience. And one of the best ways to get experience, like I said, you know, with basketball, football teams, pick your favorite sport. You practice. And that's what we're doing here. Yeah. All right. So we've got our scenario built here, and this is a new scenario. This is a brand new <laughs> scenario, one that you have not faced yet. Yes. So I'm going to give you. Uh, a little bit of information that I've created, a storyline that I've started uh, based on the initial compromise. And then your job is going to be to figure out which procedures uh, you want to use to detect the activity of the attacker. And this is how we find out what procedures we know we can do. That's right. So these four procedures, these four are separate from the other ones um, because these four are ones that you have documentation about. Oh, right? yeah. So that means you have a documented server analysis process. You have a documented firewall log review, Good. a documented endpoint analysis, so a workstation class machine, and documented memory analysis. So how do I uh, inspect the memory of a potentially compromised machine to look for the artifacts <laughs> of an attacker? <clears throat> what does it mean that you have this documentation in place in the game? It means that when we roll the dice to see if you are successful, you get a plus three bonus. As in real life. As in roll real life. the dice. That's right. That's how you figure out if I have actually am going to do something well or not, because I'm going to roll the dice. <laughs> and that's actually how we're going to determine whether or not, oh, I threw the dice, whether or not this uh, activity is successful or not. We're going to roll a d20, and if uh, the result is 1 to 10, then the activity that you tried, the investigatory work, the procedure, one. fails. Oh, it fails. Yes. Uh, so if you say, I'm going to look through my firewall logs, we'll roll. And if you get a three, and your firewall log failed to find the attacker. But if your attack, if your roll was successful, if it's 11 through 20, then uh, you will be able to successfully detect any or one of these four um, uh. attacker activities that matches up, right, that has one of the procedures on its detection list. So we'll show you what that looks like. It'll make some sense. A couple of caveats. If you roll three failures in a roll, in a row, eh, roll, if you roll three failures in a row, we're going to grab an inject card. Those are fun. Yeah. So the inject card is either going to add um, some good stuff for you yeah. or some chaos. <laughs> chaos is fun. We're going to, you know, I'm kind of hoping for chaos. I'm, it, I'm and it happens it. all the time. That's in right. Oh, response. Yes. Yeah. You, yeah. The, the thing that you really wish would not happen while you're in the middle of an investigation happens and... Um, as my dad likes to say, Murphy is alive and well. And oh, yeah. So, uh, so that is why when an inject card can come in. Also, if you roll a one, you get a critical failure, you get an inject card. If you roll a natural 20, uh, you get a, an inject card. Oh, so, I got that. Um, well, they can be good and bad. Yeah. So. Yes. The other thing to remember is you can pick one of these to use, and that's going to be the process of the game. You two talking and deciding which of these you're going to use, and we're also going to flip these in a minute. Um, if you use this and it's successful, you can do it again. If you use this and it fails, you have to wait three turns before you can use it again. And remember, ten turns and the game is over. So let's flip over our other procedure cards. And these are the ones you do not have a documented procedure for. But we have them in our back pocket. No, they're on the table. Oh. <laughs> well, yes, technically they're on the table. Dad jokes! All right. All right, so, you guys ready to start? Yes. All right. Sure. <laughs> yes. Such, such yes. confidence. Such, such enthusiasm. Yeah. All right. Uh, it's Friday afternoon. It's about 6 really? o'clock. It's quitting time. Us already? Yes, sir. Because this is how the real world works. It's 6 o'clock. You get home from work, or maybe you've been working at home, and you crack open your favorite beverage, and you sit down, and uh, the phone rings, and um, you get a, uh, you pick it up, and it's one of the IT uh, <laughs> folks. It says, IT operations. Uh, hey, Mr. Hamrick, um, I'm really sorry to bug you, but 
I think, uh, I think something's wrong with some of our servers, and I think it might have been uh, a hacker that, that they're all shut down. Somebody powered them all off, and I, I tried to power one back on, and it won't come back up, and I don't know what's going on. Um, but I, I looked at the last person who logged in, and it was it was it was Joe, he, you know the you know the server admin, the guy with the long, kind of weird beard and glasses, uh, <laughs> you know that guy. The one who's in the data center all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With the jackets. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. I, I went I went over by his cube to see if if there if there was something that he knew of, and he was gone. All of his stuff was gone. Mm -hmm. All of his stuff all of his gone? stuff was gone. Like he, I don't know what happened. So, here we are. Uh, you have some uh, server outages and uh, and potentially a disgruntled administrator. And just out of curiosity, Ryan, did we happen to let anybody go on Friday? <laughs> not, not that I'm aware of. Okay, maybe the CIO <laughs> did, but certainly not you. you no, were, I would never. You're a benevolent that. dictator. Yeah. You, yeah. Okay. So. Well. Uh, call John. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> <laughs> That's really the move. Okay, so it's a, it's a conference call. What flows downhill? I can't remember it. Yeah, so in, and so in that particular case, I, as the CISO, would uh, ask for an incident manager to be, or yeah. incident response mm -hmm. process to be in, uh, initiated. Yeah. We need an incident manager, which is usually the manager of the security team, and they need to get a hold of all the stakeholders and let's set up a conference call and start working the problem. All right. <clears throat> Sounds good. All right. So now you're on the call, and uh, everybody says, "What are our orders, sir? What what what's the first thing that we should do to figure out what happened?" So for the server analysis, that would be my first go-to. Okay. Uh, assuming that the tool for doing server analysis isn't resident on the, some of the servers that don't come back up. Um, <laughs> so you still have an internet connection. You can still download tools if you need to. So yeah, you can perform this work if you would like to. Would you can concur? I see this one here? Absolutely. Don't touch the cards. Just kidding. I'm going to touch it. It's responsive pulls the memory okay. yeah, from the so suspected system. We're looking at the uh, at the different types of things that we can do, and which one matches up with um, you know that type of that type of intrusion. I'm thinking memory analysis since we can do okay. it. Well, it, it, you know, I don't know if that would work super well if the servers aren't oh, booting. Uh, yes. If they're, if they're not powered up, right? We're not going to have memory to analyze. Yes. Um, I'm also worried the server analysis isn't going to work very well because we can't access the servers themselves. We would have to go to some sort of off, off the off that machine log, some trail. Well, that's what I was saying. If yeah. the server analysis tools were not stored on those, like I mean, depending on what they're seeing as server analysis tools, uh, baseline verify, operating normal strata. Mm. Yeah, no, that's not going to do it. Maybe you probably also, have to look at them at some point, given that the servers are the one thing that you know that got affected. But uh, right, but if, so they can't boot, right? One of them can't boot. One oh, of them can't boot. Them. Yeah, let's say you could ask, you, you know, hey, can we access any server? Yes, as a matter of fact. In that same. Some of the other servers have started to come back up. So let's do some uh, server analysis on some of the other servers. Hooray! Right? There we go. Now we let's got an action. All right. So we're going to roll a little bit here. And our roll is. <laughs> one. Oh, snap! You know, he, he uh, uh, practiced rolling the dice before we started. I used all my good he rolls. He was rolling very you well know, and people, right out of the gate of you one. You should know better. You should know better. So let's shuffle our inject and see what... what it reminds me of a story I heard the other day where, yes, they had a complete hot DR site <coughs> that they never tested. <laughs> Accent on the never tested part. Mm -hmm. All right, so what's our inject? <laughs> the inject, fortunately, uh, the legal team is here. <laughs> They've come to help, and oh. they've taken your most skilled incident handler in a meeting as, to explain the incident. As the CISO, I would thank them very much for their help in this particular incident. <laughs> um, and they're going to take or my most skilled incident handler? Yeah. Well, luckily, that's not John. John. Yeah, yeah, John's still so. <laughs> Yeah, he sucks, so you're fine. Um, he works so hard, but gosh, he's yeah. just yeah. not that bright. Who he's brought he's a, online all the time. All the time. That's the best thing I can say about John. He brought a lawyer to the party. <laughs> Or who brought a lawyer to the party? Yeah. There's always one person who pretty much runs the whole IR process, that one essential person. <clears throat> well, the legal team took that person away for very important reasons. Uh, they may never come back. All the quiet people who are just passively listening and hoping not to get called on need to step up. Now is your time. That's, Shine. That is actually a good point. There's two things about bringing legal 
uh, if you have an incident, not necessarily, actually like this one, next, a good example of having legal and We would need legal and law because, enforcement. Because if you've got a disgruntled employee, based on the limited information we have at this point, um, you might be wanting to preserve evidence in case that you're going to take legal action after the fact. And depending on the kind of company you are, public, private, or nonprofit even, you might have disclosure. But as soon as you bring your lawyer into it, that becomes protected attorney-client privilege information, and you might not have to disclose it. So. Yes, it's going to Sneaky. suck. It's it's going to suck to lose your best Sneaky. IR person, but there's a reason you might do that based on the scenario that mm -hmm. we have here. Yeah. Um, now, if you're playing this game for real, uh, and like, you have a room full of people, including your you know your SOC team, your incident response team, your architects, your blue team, it, you would actually make the person leave the room, and they can't help contribute to the conversation. Um, so. In this case, this isn't going to do a whole much, to, you know, a whole lot, lot to the the actual, you know, flow of the game. But keep that in mind. I mean, be creative as you're using this. If you're using this deck to actually, you know, simulate a real incident and do a tabletop exercise, then hey, that's a great opportunity to say, "All right, dude, out. Yeah. You don't get to help anymore." And or, you know, maybe don't make them actually leave the room, but you know, sit to the side. Yeah. Listen. You, no, you're throw listening. them out. <laughs> throw them out. Get out. <laughs> yes. You can go to the break room for the next 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Go across the street, get a beer, come back. And, yeah. Okay. All right. So well, now server analysis is out the window. Uh, I'm going to say endpoint analysis. I really thought that was going to work. I thought that that was pretty good. Mm -hmm. I, a little dice messed with you there, buddy. Uh, since this is the only uh, one I think would make sense at this point is endpoint analysis. Um, since some of them are coming back up. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, I would be inclined to look at uh, what was our uh, sysadmin that decided to leave? Joe. Already? Joe. Yeah. Uh, I would look at Joe's computer if it was still there. Mm -hmm. no it is, as a matter of fact. Joe's machine is still sitting in the dock. It is powered off, but you can boot it up and get to a login screen and log in with another set of credentials. Actually, there's two things I'd do in that case since Joe's machine's still there. One, I would take the hard drive out and I'd do an image of it. Very smart. <laughs> because I want to have a, you know, and establish a chain of custody because I want to make sure that if this comes down to legal, I might even have a lawyer watching me while I do this. Not that I'm the best person to respond in this case. The best person, Bob. He left, sorry. Left. Yeah. Um, but I would I would definitely do endpoint analysis. I would do a physical copy of the disk and preserve it. I might actually make a physical copy of it and work off of the copy and keep the yep. laptop intact. That's usually the way to do it, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Would you uh, agree with that? Yeah. Sure. All right. Thanks, Give boss. Let's get a little roll. Get a little rolly roll. And that's a 17, 17. plus 3. It's, a, it's, it's not a natural It's 20. not a natural 20, but it is a 20. successful endpoint analysis, ladies and gentlemen. So let's see if endpoint analysis successfully detected anything. Please. <clears throat> and I have good news. You have successfully detected how... Joe was able to uh, escalate privileges that he did not originally have on a bunch of your servers. Uh, local user admin. <laughs> so he he used um, some tools to uh, that the specifically uh, grab <laughs> grab privileges from other machines in the environment uh, <clears throat> and get an account that he did not own. And so you looked at the command history on his machine and you found out ah. While Joe did not cover his tracks well, um, and uh, you know he he did do a lot of damage, we were able to detect that yes, he was able to uh, get some elevated privileges in the environment and uh, use those by uh, you know jumping from machine to machine using some tools like PS Exec. Ah, uh, um, yes, yeah, that is a handy tool. It really is very useful and, <laughs> and for it's the good guys handy. and the bad guys. Yeah, yeah. sure. So um, that's how Joe was able to hit those machines remotely and uh, kill them with a different set of credentials. So, right. well done. You have one of the four um, successfully uncovered. What would you like so to do next? So we know he got, uh, he got escalated privileges on an account he didn't manage slash own. Uh, but we need to know where he went. Um, I mean, we know kind of where he went. Actually, I'm thinking firewall log analysis. I would, go, I would actually go with Sim. Uh, analysis, okay. Because some of that stuff may not have reached a firewall. Maybe it was all internal. We didn't. We don't have. Maybe we don't have firewalls between segments. 
okay. or, or access control list between segments, so we yeah. don't have that log information in particular firewall log review. So maybe we have server logs or we have other network logs that can show us some of the you know, um, user logs. Uh, okay. Uh, Active Directory logs. I'm up for that. I might also suggest you've gained one new piece of information. Yes. Which is the user account that Joe stole and was using. Right. And you're going to go to UEBA, right? That is exactly what I was very, very good. <laughs> yes. You know what this user is doing, so you might be able to use your UEBA tools to track and, you know, where does this user normally go? What did they log on to yesterday that they didn't log on to before? And, and for those that don't know what UEBA means, it's the end, ah, yes. uh, the user and entity behavior analytics. Yeah. So that Yuba. one's up there. Yuba. Nobody calls it Yuba, but we will now. <laughs> So here we go. We will. Um, so yeah, that's another option. I think you guys have a few things you could try. What would you like to do? Oh, I'm, I'm down with that one. Yeah, good with that. Okay, let's roll. Ah, five. Unfortunately, your UEBA analysis did not uncover anything unusual. Well, then we're going to go back to uh, Brian's point there. We'll look in the sim logs and see okay. what's happening. Up All right. There. Because we're only on roll three. Yes, three turns in, so you've got seven left. Plenty of time. Okay. And that's an 11, 11 ladies and gentlemen. Which is higher than a 10. Successful yes. detection of nothing. Oh, man. Our, our sim is not positioned properly. <laughs> it is not not right Imagine that, right? I'm shocked. Shocked, I say to hear that the right data was not in the SIM tool. Unfortunately, the SIM has only been gathering uh, data from your antivirus solution and your active uh, your perimeter firewalls and uh, your perimeter uh, web proxy. Okay, so uh, security tools team, you now have an action item to fix that. <laughs> I can. <clears throat> I'm not saying you're in it, you're, in, you're here. I need you here, okay? okay. Someone else needs to go and take a look at that. <laughs> All right, so we're on roll. That was roll four. What would you like to try next? Uh, so what, what information we have now is he's used, uh, he's compromised accounts and used them in some fashion. Um, we still don't know the initial compromise, um, but we know that the behavior suggests that something wonky went went wrong with one of our servers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or you, like, or you like toasted the OS, you know. Right, but uh, in, what, in what way? Well, it was, That's... I mean, the way that it was reported was that the servers weren't coming up. Right. So <clears throat> they didn't tell us whether they were blue screening or if they were just, yeah. you know. You technically have not connected the fact that Joe is not there and that yeah. Joe has used this tool to the fact that your servers are down. Yes. Yeah. Or were down. So. I mean, we know that he got accounts that he shouldn't have had access to. Um, I, I'm thinking maybe firewall log analysis. I try? will point out. Oh, can we rotate? This is now available to you again. Okay. Can we try that again? <laughs> I'll, I, I'm all for trying it again. Can if you would I like. would want to try that again. Okay. Was that another that nine? Five? Plus, three Plus three is a success. Hooray. Yeah. Good job, John. <laughs> yeah. Nice roll. I'm working my way up to being in the top five of our Hopefully it's handlers. effective for anything? Nope. <laughs> we are now on roll number five. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't get you anywhere. Uh, but nice roll. Um, nice roll me yeah. after having rolled it. Uh, so, yeah, that was five turns. And, yeah, your server analysis, you look over those servers, and you can't really tell very much because um, they've... We're powered down, their memory is gone uh, and clear, and your uh, any log data that was on those uh, machines was surreptitiously deleted. Okay. Yeah. See, I'm thinking if, if the servers are down, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say firewall log review just to see if something popped. Although weird it didn't show up in our SIM tool. Well, let me read the text on this firewall log review card. It says, can your organization analyze and understand firewall logs? Do you regularly emulate, emulate attack scenarios and verify that your procedures work? So, uh, it's worth trying, certainly. I think yeah, if that's something it. you want to give it a shot. We haven't successfully tried it yet. Okay, all right, let's roll it. And that is a 10 plus 3 is 13. And folks, as a matter of fact, yeah, checks out, yeah. firewall, <laughs> firewall log review did I hit that to a 12 or whatever it was you successfully was rolled? Yeah. Congratulations. What you found as you look through your logs is the use of background intelligent transfer services. Uh, leaving the device, leaving the organization, um, 
you know, from some of those server machines. And uh, yeah, large amounts of data were transferred using this protocol. And you block a lot of stuff leaving your environment, right? You have a lot of stuff that is filtered effectively. Your web proxy filters, um, you know, uh, malicious, known malicious as well as uh, as unknown or uncategorized sites. Okay. Um, you you block a lot of uh, you know disallowed services like FTP and Telnet and even SSH from leaving your environment, but, but. you do allow this protocol to leave your environment. Uh, and so you also allow it to leave uninspected. Do you know why you allow it to leave uninspected? Probably because it's encrypted. That could be it, but most likely it is because at some point an admin who was trying to figure out why Windows updates weren't working <laughs> just allowed all BITS services through the firewall to any site without inspection, and that firewall rule has been sitting in there Forever. buried with others for several years with no comment on it. But hey, you know, Windows updates work. They do. They do not work now. <laughs> yes. Heck of a lot of good at you? Okay. You've uncovered two of the four, and uh, you have four turns left. What would you like to do next? I'm thinking memory analysis because we just still don't have the initial compromise, although I have sinking uh, suspicion it has to do with the credentials that he stole, but we may not see that without looking at the memory on the impacted server. Yeah, I, it could be that, or it could be endpoint security protection analysis to see uh, you know, if we've gotten, if our endpoint protection uh, triggered actually gave us something. <clears throat> it, it, I think that's a little less likely that that would be effective. Uh, than memory analysis, though. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking since some of the machines have come back up, there could be something that, you know, particularly on the persistent side. For sure. Yeah. We'll see what's running, running in memory. Running in memory. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So memory analysis it is. Let's go. And that's a five. Plus, Plus three, three is eight, but still is a gift for you. really good at it. Yeah. <laughs> We're near yeah. the volatility. <laughs> so you fired up volatility and it crashed because you weren't running the right version of Python. Um, <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, yeah, your memory analysis didn't get you anywhere. There was no memory left on the servers. There was no memory yeah. left on the um, on the workstation that you suspect to have been used in the attack. So, cyber de deception. Attackers now we're talking. Uh, we don't see this very often in customer environments, but when we do, it I, always I makes love us me smile. a honeypot. I love me a honeypot. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. it could have, it, it can work on an insider threat, which is what we are basically going down the path of. Yeah. Um, it also works nicely if, let's say, you had a honey account in place, oh. right? That somebody was trying to steal the credentials for and use, and there's no valid use for those accounts. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, could you maybe inspect to see if. Hey, was our Honey account stolen and used by an insider? I think we should check that out. Let's give it a shot. It. And, and here's hoping you roll something. Let's go, baby. That was an eight. And three? Nope, not on the. Nah, unfortunately, <sighs> that was a good thought, and I, you know, I think it's worth uh, keeping in our back pocket. Although we're running out of rolls. You are. You're now on roll seven. Um, we're past UEBA, so we can now use UEBA again if you would like. Yeah, I want to try that again. Give that a shot. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is roll eight. Let's see how we do. And that's a 10. That's is it in it's one to 10. Yeah, 11 goes up. So, no, it's a success, right? I, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it is. You know what? Because I like I like you and I want to give you a shot. Hot shot CISO. You, you, you get a plus one for CISO knowledge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You added your, your, uh, your modifier. charisma modifier, really, <laughs> yeah. really knocked it up to a 20. <laughs> You have confirmed that an insider threat uh, was yes. present and was the cause. Um, after looking at Joe's activity, you saw, oh man, Joe was like doing a lot of scanning and logging on to machines and trying to log on with his account to a bunch of these servers and he wasn't able to. He was having trouble with it. And you also were able to correlate that with some web searches that you saw that Joe did. Joe was looking for, how do I use Metasploit how do I use PS Exec? How do yeah, I use yeah, yeah. other tools to steal credentials and access machines remotely? Because we are logging where folks go. I yeah. mean, we do monitor. Yeah. You know, and that was in our SIM tool. It just didn't immediately help That's right. us with it. So we you have I like that right DLP. Ha ha kidding. DLP never works. <laughs> Black Hills, Jason Blanchard, John Strand. Tip of the hat. Yeah. We see you. You a real one. Real recognize real. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, so we're, we're, you have two rolls left, roll nine rolls. and roll ten. 
We right. need our persistence mechanism. How is he staying in our environment, able to do things remotely, possibly, or? Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, it's got to be, I mean, of our available options, it's either going to be <laughs> UEBA, which hasn't proven to be helpful, or it could be our... Yeah, you know that he's been using tools that could be flagged as malicious. Yeah. Um, you know, what other malware did he use? What other, uh, you know, uh, items might have been detected by an endpoint security solution? We get our we get our plus three with this one, so I say we, we go for... How many rolls do we have left? Two. two. So, hey, we'll try that one, and then we'll go to okay. this one next. Endpoint so. analysis is your next roll. Uh, sorry, that one bounced off your arm. My apologies. Count. Doesn't count. Four. That's much better. How was that worse? <laughs> <laughs> so we get a re-roll, and it was actually worse. It was one less. I'm sorry, that one sucked. Let me try that again. <laughs> no. <laughs> that was a one. Uh, oh, God, help me. All you, right. Let me roll the day. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> next time, you get to roll. We're cheating. That's fair. You're the CISO. You get to roll. Yeah. yeah, CISO gets to roll. CISO action activated. Yeah, hit the button. Oh, Boom. snap! 15. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> um, the man rolled a 19. Uh, so that means, yes, you have successfully uncovered that uh, the attackers added... Uh, uh, we would have write it. We would have this one or that one. That's right. Yeah, we're we're going down the right path. Yeah. You successfully detected that uh, the... Uh, that Joe was able to add a new user account using his elevated privileges to these machines and yeah, use those yeah. uh, to use that user account that he added to the machines he compromised and uh, pulled and used that to turn them off. So you figured out everything you needed to figure out for this attack. Well done. And we brought legal in at the right time mm -hmm. just by happenstance. Mm -hmm. right, Although, no, not right by time. happenstance. Legal yeah. comes in, as a matter of fact, at the end of this and says, I hope you didn't need Bob, the incident handler. We sent him home. He had had a really long day. Um, so Yeah, he had to talk to legal all day. That's right. He was, yeah. <laughs> On a Friday night. So you know, this actually did work out well. Yeah, will you hand me those boxes over there, John? So, yes. um, you know, folks, grab yourself a copy of Backdoors and Breaches. And oh. this is the uh, expansion deck, which we didn't play with this time. But uh, there's a bunch of new cards in there, um, some new... Uh, scenario cards, a couple of new procedures, many fun new injects, and some consultant cards. You can actually call in a consultant, which, which is know, real. near and dear to our heart because we're consultants. Uh, so we love the idea of, of reaching out and asking for help if you need. Um, so yeah, go grab yourself a copy of this game. You can also play it online at play.backdoorsandbreaches.com for free. You can play it with Tabletop Simulator, um, which is a... Uh, role-playing game framework that you can load in different games to, or just grab the cards and play with your friends and family. Bring Your, your family's going to love it, trust me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but your co-workers yeah. will. So Fun for kids of all ages. So happy National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. We're happy to have been here with you. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the video, and we hope you enjoy Backdoors and Breaches. So take care, folks. Oh.